uh, this lamb is not getting better. How did they get that? Charlie, how much is our wool worth right now? Uh, it's negative how much it costs you to truck it. <laughs> oh, 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 they blow it. <laughs> I'm so tired of our wool being worth nothing. I'm pretty excited of what I ended up doing with, with wool. <laughs> Good morning, you guys. Uh, another emergency run to the barn this morning. Our bottle lambs have once again pulled off a hose. I have no idea how they're getting it. So we have a big cleanup again, and it's looking like maybe they should get weaned sooner than later. <sighs> Oh, she already got it cleaned up. Atta girl! <laughs> Same holes? Uh, no, the last one. How did they get that? Unless they're reaching up over. There's no way. So they got this hose off, but there's no way they could get in there. That's so weird. Oh, I don't even want to go in here. I have a bad feeling. Oh, she's still kicking. Well guys, I am not one to give up a good fight. Uh, this lamb is not getting better, not showing any signs of turning the corner. I thought maybe two days ago was, I'm like actually upset. Uh, I thought two days ago she looked a lot better. So I got my hopes up, which sometimes I shouldn't do. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I hate the moaning and groaning. Um, I feel like she's in pain. So I am going to do what's best. I think she's in distress and uh, I cannot stand to come into the barn, you know, four more times today and see her like this. Uh, every time I get here, she's flipped over onto the bad side. So I'm going to do what's best for her, I think, and uh, put her over misery. It's not starting out to be a great day. I hope Charlie will make it better today. He's coming to shear and he always comes in a good mood. So uh, here's hoping that the rest of the day is gonna get better. Well, after what's been one of the worst mornings I've had in a long time, uh, Charlie is here. He's just starting his first U right now. What I really wanna talk about is how frustrated I am that our wool is worth nothing in Canada right now. Uh, over Christmas, I collaborated with Romy, my friend who has uh, started her own wool shop on her farm. Over the last few weeks, I've been doing something on my own, which is taken a lot of research, a lot of trial and error, but um, I'm pretty excited of what I ended up doing with, with wool. I'm gonna talk to Charlie a little bit about uh, why he thinks wool is worth nothing. I'm sure you guys have a question for. Got old Ruby. What's the consensus on the suffix? Yeah. Are they spinning yeah. out of them? Well, I'm putting them on prolific views, right? Like, I'm not keeping too, too many back for replacement. Or I'm trying not to anyway. I have to the one year. Uh -huh. um, they've been okay. I just keep breeding their daughters back with Rito. Um, but, no, and even this last year I kept them on the branch path as replacing you because they were bred, uh, they were on a Lido view. But I don't like them as mothers. They're lazy. The suffix? They're, they're the suffix. I don't like I don't have many suffix. 
have it from India. I sold most of it to Belinda. Oh, yeah. So. But she the, got uh, one set of the night. Yeah, she was getting that. She was getting that. I just get a <laughs> And there's only one baby in there. I had never noticed she had a black mark. <laughs> First mark. A lot of square footage there, Charlie. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad you don't charge me by the square foot. <laughs> Or by the pound. Or by the pound. <laughs> so true. Uh, dirty, dirty. Oh, yeah, she's already got it on. Bye, honey. <laughs> what our wool is worth right now. Charlie, how much is our wool worth right now? Uh, it's negative how much it costs you to truck it. <laughs> so I'm losing money. So yeah, no. Charlie has not got any money from the wool we've sheared for the, since last December. And even, or last February. Yep. And even before that, it was not that great. 10 cents or something like So that. yeah, so this has been a, prolonged problem even pre-covid so I don't even think this is a covid thing it could be a is it a China thing I mean they were a big they were a big buyer right yeah they they bought a lot of wool I think it's a lot of it comes down to the processing so they can handle more wool more efficiently because they're not paying, paying labor, labor. Yeah. yeah so yeah Charlie was just saying it's pretty much I think a processing issue so uh, most of the, I think most of the wool has always historically been shipped to China. Uh, as we all know, they kind of um, produce things at a, a lot cheaper price uh, due to labor. And we just have really high labor costs and processing costs. So anyway, we're going to try and do stuff with our own wool. I mean, I don't have to truck it? No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not using my wool. <laughs> I'm using good Canadian wool, not my wool. All right, back to work. Uh oh, uh oh. Oh, 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 oh they blow it. <laughs> So we are all done. It is dark out, so I've got the lights on on this half of the barn. But uh, what I was really hoping, we've done a lot of moving some animals around the last couple days. I was really concerned we wouldn't have enough room 
uh, for these using this pen, but since we've got them sheared, we've got lots of room, which is an advantage of shearing your group um, in decent time before they lamb to make sure they've got ample feeder space uh, because we're getting into these critical times that they need to you need to make sure every you is getting what you think they're getting on paper so i was a bit concerned we left this pen a bit shy because i put a breeding group on the end of their pen but we're good so there's i think we're just shy of we're right around 100 U's in this pen so they should easily fit um in three quarters of one side and of course it has decided to be winter today so it is really cold it's gonna be really cold overnight and everyone's gonna to ask me why are you shearing them uh we shear them regardless actually a lot of people do shear in the winter it helps with the uh, moisture in the barn and i've really struggled with that too how i kind of supplement heat is uh, that there's lots of heat off this pack so we'll keep them bedded up real nice and uh, the other thing is i will have to wash their feed like a hawk and i will have to increase their feed if it looks like they're cleaning it up too quick and their uh, wool grows back really quite fast so they're not due for another eight weeks um i'm i'm trying to push shearing ahead a little bit just to get the hoof trimming done a bit early i know i promised i show you what i was up to i'm so tired of our wool being worth nothing if there's one thing i learned at christmas time through my website it's the fact that you guys love stuff made with wool and for me um i don't have the skill or the know-how of what to do with my wool. Uh, I don't know how to clean it or skirt it. I don't have the contacts for processing and all that stuff. But what I do have, I do have the ability to work with other people. So at Christmas time, I worked with Romy and she designed uh, a, a Billy Dryer ball and some Ruthie Christmas ornaments. And she inspired me to try it on my own. So I have been busy crafting, which is not something I ever even consider doing because I'm not a crafty person. I'm not, I do not have an artsy bone in my body and it's really pushed me. And I've been working on this probably for the last month uh, after hours. So l there's been a few less videos because I've been doing other things. I think I'm going to embarrassingly show you all the things that I've been doing. This is what I've been working on for weeks. I am making Billy, Valentine's Day Billy balls, Billy ornaments. And I think they're really cute. So this is what I've been making and it's been quite the process. Um, this is what happens when you screw up. Anyone that doesn't care about this stuff I've already clicked off, but I will show you a little brief montage of me doing this and then I will have a full tutorial on my website with a video linked in there. I won't bore you guys with a whole video on it. I actually got this idea when uh, Romy inspired me with her dryer balls. I'm like, I have to know how she does these. And the first one that popped up was one that was black with the white heart. And I'm like, Valentine's Day, Billy, I am all over this. So all these are handmade by me. I'm gonna have them on my website for for the Valentine's, pre-Valentine's days, but I will keep you guys posted on a video when I go live with these. Here's my little hack for those who don't know how to, like me, I'm gonna just show you how I do this. So I just kind of unravel the braid, like so, and find how it's looped together, like so, like a big necklace. Rip off the, this is the brand that I'm using. I think they're from New Brunswick. So it's pure wool, product of Canada, and they sell it at the wool co-op. So that's how I'm kind of supporting everyone just by buying there and buying Canadian wool. So then what I do is I find the little knot and I cut it there. And then I find the one that loops around because there's two spots that it's like, around the wool to keep it in place. So I just find the one that's kind of attached to those. It's not that one, so it's the other one, it's this one. And then you just un take those, off. I know this is dumb, and but um, I didn't know this when I started this project. And if you're a craft person, I apologize for my ignorance. This is the first time I've ever done anything with wool, so yarn okay so that is freed up and then what I did for the actual process 
I put two chairs together. Not in the frame, just a minute. Okay, so what I did is I put two chairs back to back and I put this around the chairs. I'm gonna tell you how many times I've done this in the last three weeks. And then I start making my ball and I'm gonna do it up close for that. I start just with the end, like so. Can you see? This is terrible lighting, I'm sorry. So here's the end, like so. And then I just start it here and I wrap it around my fingers like a gajillion times. And then you take out your fingers, like so. And then, and then I just kind of wrap it around that, wrap it around the actual thing. And then you just do that a few times. And then you just start forming your ball. So you just keep wrapping around and around. So see how it's kind of made a little ball? And then you just start, that's kind of your base. So one of these braids, did two balls, so they're about the size of a softball, I'd say. Okay, so what I do is I find, um, I use a ball that I've already done and I kind of measure so they're pretty close. Just take scissors, cut it off. And I've learned the hard way that if you don't get this end kind of tucked in real good, so I just use a felting needle and uh, kind of, kind of put it under that last row. I mean, all the tutorials I saw, you didn't have to do this. I just, mine fall apart because I'm useless. I don't want to go through all this work and have it fall apart because you can't, it gets all tangled up and then I can't get it back together. Okay, finished the last two balls. I had these two made from the other day. I wanted to put them all together. The next step is going to be throwing them in the washing machine. And to do this, I actually put them in a nylon. So I'll show you kind of how I do that. I uh, had to buy nylons because I don't have any. And then I just cut off the buttocks. So I learned all this on YouTube, by the way. So you can just YouTube how to do it. Lucy, quiet. Um, but they said to put it inside out because the seam um, might attach to your wool ball when it felts in the wash. I always just put it inside out and then your seam is on the outside. And then, And then I tie a knot. You can do a string, but you're not supposed to use yarn because the yarn will felt. So there you go. It's in there pretty good. And then I'm just going to put the other ones in there as well. So there you go. Here's my four wool balls. Now you guys see why I needed the new dryer. Oh, so I've got the last ones that I did and they all kind of knotted up with each other. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but uh, I do a look. I put them in a load with some towels uh, on a hot water wash and then I throw them in the dryer on a hot, on the hottest dry that you can. And then you may have to do it a couple times. So then I do dryer and then I do washer and then I do dryer and then I do washer. Lucy, stop. I'll take out yesterdays that have been through. So they went through two hot wash cycles, two hot dry cycles. And I'll just show you what I got. I cut mine out. If you want to reuse your nylons, then you don't have to do that. But I will not wear these because I don't wear dresses very often. So this is what happens to mine. So you can still see that there's, like it shows the, the wool. And I am wondering if it's the wool that I'm using because it doesn't seem to matter how many times I put it in. Like I put these guys in a couple more times and you can still see it. They're really quite nice. And then I did three with roving. I just wanted, and I experimented different ways to put those together. Oh, this might be the winner. I find that harder it is to get them out of the nylon, the better. Oh, this is perfect. So I think what I'm going to do next time is use roving because it's a perfect ball. So I learned something. So let's do this. 
Um, grab a cookie cutter. I got a multi-sized one because I wasn't sure, but I used the smallest one. And it's pretty thick, which is nice with the roving. And then I take a little bit of Romy's roving, which is this. And I just pull, I guess with roving, you don't cut it, which I was doing for a bit. Yeah, I guess you pull it off. So I just, you start with a little and you can always add more to it. And then you just kind of, I kind of find a pattern where it looks like there's kind of a break and it would just add a nice little touch to the break. Push that in, grab your needle, your felting needle. So it's kind of, oh, that one's kind of bent. I don't do this right. Please don't come at me. So it's like this, cookie cutter. And then you just start pressing these needles in. I totally stole this off another girl's YouTube, so I will include hers as well. She makes it look a lot easier. So there's the grand reveal, and then I just kind of, you too. My billy balls made with the yarn look really cool. They kind of look like a sweater. So that's really neat. Um, when I put it back in the wash and the dryer kind of as its own thing, it, then it became kind of more fuzzier. So it looks pretty cool. You can still see the texture. So I would say probably um, I would leave this as an ornament and not necessarily a dryer ball. Um, just because I'm wondering if the wool I used isn't the wool that kind of felts together because it's been in the wash and the dryer probably uh, probably at least four times, maybe five altogether. And it didn't really it didn't really melt or felt together. So I would say uh, these are pretty awesome ornaments. Some other roving came in the mail this week that I ordered from the wool co-op and uh, I used Romy's again in the middle. And I did red for cinnamon. So I'm, these, are, these are cinnamon hearts. This is what it's gonna be on the website. So same kind of deal. I would say if I was making these again for ornaments, I would use the roving. It, it makes a ball really, really fast. I only have to wash it once and put it in the dryer once. So it saves a whole lot of time there. And it comes out really smooth. Like it looks more like a wool ball. So these ones turned out, I mean, these are awesome because I think they kind of look like a sweater. Like the texture, I think it's pretty cool anyway. So yeah, so here they are, Cinnamon Heart and my Billy Valentines. This was um, a little painful for me. I don't do crafts. This is probably the first time in my entire life I've attempted to do something like this. They will be for sale. There aren't very many, 85 of these maybe. And the red, I might have, when it's all said and done, I might have 50. Stay tuned. Um, if you guys watched my live feed last night, because last night was Friday night, that was the first time I've ever done one. I was super nervous. We had some technical difficulties at the start, uh, but you guys are amazing. Thank you for being over there. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for doing all the things. This stuff is really exciting me because I'm really wanting to support our wool industry. And I know it seems silly and uh, very insignificant, but I just feel like I'm doing my part, I guess. And you guys are really supportive. Love you guys. Have a good rest of your weekend and we'll see you later.